So to begin the, the presentation, I thought we would talk a little bit about a couple of real-world customer examples of automation. We're going to talk about a, a suite of solutions um, that automate various layers of technology in your data center or in a new cloud uh, environment. Um, and what we want to cover today is just is not only the overview of the solutions, but you know some of the key business drivers um, for automating um, in general, and some uh, a lot of customer examples and real world scenarios of where people have automated and the benefits that they have received. So to begin the presentation, I'm going to talk a little bit about a couple of real world examples. One quite a uh, large customer, uh, quite a large IT organization, and another one, a uh, relatively small IT organization because automation uh, can provide benefits to both small, medium, and large customers. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about some of the key business drivers. Then we'll go into an overview of uh, a suite of the solutions themselves, and then talk a little bit about how to get started with automation in your organization, some ideas there, some thoughts, uh, and then we'll open it up for um, summary uh, questions. Okay, so um, we'll start with a relatively large organization. This is a United States-based bank that is a global uh, banking organization. This is uh, a review of one area of automation that they implemented. Um, and this was focused around automating their database uh, operations. They had implemented automation before for, uh, for their servers, um, and uh, they were now interested in automating uh, other parts of their IT organization. Their goals were quite simple. They, they wanted to be better, faster, cheaper. Um, this had all started um, with their senior vice president being given a cost reduction goal in operations. Um, their focus was around their database platforms. They had over 15,000 database hosts and well over 600 DBAs on a global basis, so quite a large organization. Um, like I said, their key business driver was their um, senior vice president being given a, a cost reduction target. Um, they had targeted then some key use cases where they spend a lot of time, where their uh, DBA organization spent a lot of time, um, and that was in doing database provisioning and configuration. Um, they wanted to be able to take this uh, some of these key use cases, um, database configuration provisioning, patching, database cloning, and make some of that self-service for their constituents. They had uh, uh, over uh, 50 different lines of business that were their top priorities in terms of support. Um, and they also had some key vulnerabilities uh, in that they were well behind on their patching of a lot of their databases, uh, particularly Oracle, um, and they were never able to catch up. And so there were significant um, security vulnerabilities as a result of not keeping up to date on security patches from some of their key vendors. Um, this was uh, quite a successful project, but was all-encompassing, and, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, the business impact, the organizational impact, um, and, and the results. Um, they rolled this product out much, much faster than what they anticipated um, and was very successful in, in meeting their goals and starting to see efficiency gains um, in their process. So they selected the solution. Uh, this was a database and middleware automation solution from HP. They selected their solu uh, the solution in early uh, 2011, um, um, basically in uh, kind of the March timeframe of 2011. Um, and um, they had 
estimated uh, originally that it was going to take them two years to roll this out across their entire organization. This was simply um, primarily uh, focused on you know their past experience in rolling out other types of solutions, uh, particularly their um, server automation solution, um, which was from working with another um, another vendor product. Um, however, senior management had a pretty tight goal, and so senior management requested that they try to hit a production live date of Q4 2011, which basically um, they started the project in Q2, uh, which basically gave them six months, um, so significantly less time than what they originally planned. Um, so they started the process. Here are some of the key mi uh, milestones that you see. Um, they worked with uh, uh, some of um, the HP and uh, some partner uh, HP Partner uh, Professional Services resources for that period of time. Uh, the bottom line is they went to production rollout of the solution at the end of Q4 and accomplished their goal and um, started seeing significant business impacts almost immediately. In that next following quarter, they reduced cost of uh, operations across these primary use cases that they um, had targeted by over 50%. So kind of the solution highlights that they, they wanted to uh, put in several things. They wanted to be able to design automation as, as new uh, um, uh, use cases came up and, um, and be able to deploy that automation across the, the worldwide operations. They wanted a, they wanted a self-service portal. They wanted to be able to put up um, automation services for database functionality into a self-service portal um, to allow their end users to drive uh, some of this automation on their own. Um, they wanted to start driving much more adherence to global standards in terms of configuration uh, of their databases. Um, and they wanted to focus on uh, their DBA productivity. They wanted a 30% increase in productivity across the board. Um, and uh, uh, they wanted to be able to, um, you know, be able to perform sort of main daily maintenance and, and, and quarterly maintenance tasks uh, in a much more efficient process. So here, you, that was the primary goals. Um, they achieve uh, most of that in, in phase one. They then wanted to put up sort of tie this in with some of their uh, alerting uh, uh, with uh, another tool that they had used for database alerting. They wanted to tie this in with the automation engine um, to be able to automate remediation of uh, standard uh, alerts. Uh, and then they started that project in, uh, immediately after phase one in a phase two type of scenario. One thing that uh, was really important um, that was as a result of um, what they implemented was uh, an organizational change. Um, you know, one one thing that's really important to understand, and if you fully embrace the world of automation, regardless of what technology layer you're automating, whether it's servers or network or database or applications or whatever, uh, is to fully embrace the automation uh, solutions um, which should drive an organizational change from, the, from traditional methodologies of, of manual based processes or, or whatever. So this is how they were organized before. They had basically uh, a large number of DBAs or organized in various uh, business sectors. Uh, and one of the problems and challenges in their, in their environment was that each business sector team sort of did things their own way. So they had no standardization. They had no uh, commonality in terms of how they did things and w what the configurations were and what their licensing structure were for some of their core platforms. It was, it was all over the place. After they implemented this model and, and, and drove automation into the process, uh, there was a significant reduction in the DBA uh, the DBA is required in each business sector. Uh, there was a, they implemented a shared, centralized shared services team um, that developed, tested, and drove automation that would then be deployed 
uh, across each business sector, and uh, the, the, the business sector DBA simply um, implemented the automation that came out of the shared services team. The, there was a couple of people that they put in an architectural and technology role to coordinate the automation that they were doing in their database practice with what they were doing with uh, some of their other functional areas like server automation and network and, and other kinds of things to make sure that they were aligned from a technology and, and, and uh, architectural basis. Here's an example of some of the studies that they did you know, after they implemented automation. Um, this is dealing with uh, building uh, standalone Oracle databases. Uh, obviously, uh, there's a lot of steps involved in, in, in building a database that, that are basically you know, non-automatable types of activities. Um, but of the automatable activities, uh, they achieved a 95% reduction in uh, those types, types of activities. One of the surprises that they uh, discovered in, when they implemented automation uh, in their databases is that there were several dependencies that they had in their systems administration team and their security administration team. And when they sat down with those folks, um, they realized that they could build into the automation uh, solution that, um, workflows that they were implementing around database. They could build a lot of that functionality that the system admins and security teams wanted to uh, perform uh, into their automation flows. And so there was also a 90% reduction in their uh, time savings in communicating uh, steps between these other two groups. And so what it did is, is, is drove the overall process, not just the, the time they spent in configuring and dealing with the databases, but the overall time that they spent uh, down drastically as well. So these are the, these are, you know, I'm using this as an example, but these, this is fairly common amongst our customers when they embrace automation, embrace what it can do to break down communications uh, across different silos of groups uh, and uh, form better cooperation and coordination with those groups and automate the process uh, across the board. Uh, then um, one quick example from a much smaller organization. This was a team of people um, also looking to uh, automate tasks around their databases, but it's a much smaller organization. They had uh, basically 14 DBAs taking care of 60 uh, to 80 production databases that were all Oracle Rack clustered databases. So fairly complex database clustering technology in, in play here. Um, but their primary driver here was since they were in the uh, healthcare industry, um, the Results of the HIPAA um, standards um, had driven the IT organization to have to deploy Oracle patching four times a year. Uh, they could no longer skip patching levels and things uh, as they had done in the past. So it had traditionally taken all 14 databases four to five weeks to patch their entire footprint uh, of Oracle uh, databases. So a significant annual cost for a small organization um, they implemented uh, patching with the database automation solution and reduced that time required down to three or four DBAs a couple of weeks, uh, and the annual cost came down by over 90%. So a very focused use case, a much smaller footprint, um, but a significant um, uh, achievement in terms of their cost reduction. So just a couple of examples of real-world scenarios that, that we've, we've seen in the past. Um, so, so why automate? The business reality. Um, kind of, you know, so what we're seeing across all of our customers, small, medium, and large, is that, uh, you know, the, the complexity of, of, of technology, the demands of, of users, you know, we're in a, we're in a world where um, we're being driven by uh, you know, the consumers being uh, used to getting information immediately um, um, and um, time to market uh, requirements from the lines of businesses being much more demanding. Um, 
still having IT teams working in silo organizations and in a, an underlying infrastructure that is still dealing with traditional manual provisioning, patching, and and uh, other other types of processes. So, um, you know, so the situation is, um, you know, the infrastructure um, demands need to be much more streamlined. Uh, break down the com uh, the communication gaps between the different silos so that we can deliver um, services and fulfillment to our constituents in a much faster time frame. So automation addresses a, a number of these issues. Um, you know, IT budgets are shrinking. Time to market, um, you know, is becoming more demanding. Applications need to be released um, many more times per year. Many more applications. Um, than before, uh, much higher reliability requirements. Um, basically, uh, the demands are everything needs to be better, faster, and cheaper. And really the only um, valid way to address these issues is to, to drive automation into the process and into the, into the organization. And, and, and really to drive automation across the entire application delivery uh, infrastructure. So, um, you know, not only the underlying infrastructure of network and server technology, technology, but automating the layers of technology that go go on that infrastructure. Um, so, database, middle uh, and middleware technology, full application deployment and and, and configuration automation. Uh, so breaking down the silos and, and automating uh, across the entire technology layer uh, in your data center or your cloud. Um, just a few more examples of the benefits of what our customers who have deployed these solutions have seen. Uh, significant reduction in man hours required to do lots of these manual uh, tasks much better utilization of technology, server utilization upwards of 80% uh, improvements, um, application deployment success rates going significantly higher, um, uh, just uh, um, um, benefit after benefit being layered upon driving towards speed, uh, flexibility, and uh, cost reduction. Um, across the board, um, HP's uh, customers who implemented automation realize for every dollar they spend on automation, they've, they've generated $4.8 in benefits um, for this. Various, various layers, again, server, server automation, network automation, database automation, and, uh, across the layers of technology, but significant impact, and we've got uh, literally hundreds of, of examples of um, where people have gained efficiency, and um, and so now as we as we move into the world of talking about cloud, um, you know customers have have seen significant benefits in these automation solutions in traditional data center operations. Uh, what key analysts are saying about your cloud as you move into a New architecture, a new environment of cloud. Um, the, you know the same uh, requirements um, for uh, automation uh, are, are there, and and in fact are magnified. So HP um, strongly recommends looking at using automation to drive both the traditional data center in, uh, environment as well as your cloud as you move into the cloud, automating. Um, the process of um, provisioning new pools of resources and doing full IT governance um, around the, the, those technologies is, is absolutely critical to having a um, dynamic cloud that is useful in, uh, across the full life cycle. So thinking about cloud without thinking about automation or without getting there without automation is simply hallucination. So now let's talk about what the automation solutions uh, that we're talking about are. So, so this, is a, this is kind of a big picture view of implementation of automation across a, a data center 
or a cloud kind of environment. Um, um, the uh, solutions uh, outlined in green here basically represent the suite of automation solutions. So I'll start at the top. The cloud uh, service automation solution is, is that, that's your service catalog. That's where you define your services in your data center or your, your cloud environment. It is also where your uh, customers go, the service portal that they go to order or select the services. Um, but this is, this is really uh, the window into driving uh, the underlying automation solution that's actually going to go deliver the components necessary to deliver a business service. So the operations orchestration solution is a full IT process governance automation solution. It's what's going to communicate and um, be the glue, if you will, um, uh, driving automation across the various silos of technology and communicating to other IT process governance solutions such as your monitoring solution, uh, your asset tracking solution, uh, your service management solutions, making sure that the process is controlled, it's tracked, the assets are, are, are not only monitored once they're turned up in the, in the new environment, um, but that, they're, uh, that we have them tracked in, term, in our CMDB and we understand what, where the assets are and, and how they're, um, what, what business applications they're driving. Oh, oh we, uh, for example, coordinate uh, with server automation if it needs to build a new server to allow server automation to go build uh, a new server. Um, if it needs a database placed on that server, it would um, communicate with the database and middleware automation solution to go build that, that database. Um, and then our application deployment solution, we will talk about um, breaking down the silos between application deployment lifecycle and the deployment into the infrastructure as well. So this is kind of a highlighted overview of, of the solutions. We'll go into detail about each one of these. So the uh, operations orchestration solution is a full IT process governance solution. Basically, um, it, it, its goal in life is to automate any type of IT process that you have defined that is a common practice that you're, you're doing on a repeated basis. Um, the solution is you know, helping people face the challenges of uh, you know, all the manual handoffs between the different silos of teams of doing things, trying to break down those silos. Um, in automating the steps in between, um, automating the passing of information from one system to another and required to fulfill a complete um, process, uh, and ultimately achieving you know, reduced time and money required for, for these key uh, IT processes and improve the efficiency of the IT organization across the board. The solution has over 5,000 out-of-the-box um, integrations uh, and other assets that you can very quickly assemble in a drag-and-drop kind of authoring interface um, your um, uh, IT process. So this is a very easy environment to develop um, a, new, a new service or a new uh, operation automation. Uh, and it's a very powerful solution. Um, so let's walk, you know, walk through a couple of examples of more common examples of where people see sort of immediate benefits in this. A, a, a simple use case of incident management. Um, most organizations receive several thousand incidents per month, uh, and the, uh, quite a large number of these incidents uh, can be documented with a fairly common um, uh, set of steps that uh, need to be uh, taken to resolve and close out that incident. Um, so um, closed loop incident processing is a common use case for this, this product um, and can achieve uh, significant annual savings in processing, pre-processing, and, and automating the processing of tens of thousands of alerts as they um, come into the, an organization and automate the taking care of, of, of the steps to remediate those incidents. Uh, provisioning, all the way from infrastructure to application. 
um, wiring together the necessary steps across the various technology uh, silos, wiring them together into a common practice so that um, uh, the overall automation process is very efficient and will um, drive the um, provisioning and configuration requirements of new assets into an organization and achieve um, you know, efficiency gains of 80, 90 percent. And there are other um, use cases that, that uh, this product is, um, provides significant benefit for. Disaster recovery and failover. Um, you know, we've seen customers you know, taking 40 or 50 people six, seven hours a day um, and codifying this into the, an OO workflow, 80% reduction in resources. Um, change management, um, seeing um, change, changes being implemented going from um, several, several days or weeks down to less than a day and saving millions of dollars on an annual basis. Uh, improved mean time to repair. Um, we could go on and on, but there are a number of very, very um, simple use cases uh, across most organizations that can be automated with this solution. Um, now, server automation. Server automation's goal in life is to is to help provision, configure, patch, maintain, audit, and com uh, audit for compliance and security reasons. Uh, your servers and operating systems. Um, multi support for multiple uh, operating systems uh, from one tool, um, helping save valuable system administrator time uh, across um, repeatable tasks, um, reducing the number of disparate tools used to, to manage the different servers and operating systems in your environment, and providing a common platform um, to maintain visibility into um, your server environment. Um, so uh, out-of-the-box functionality for compliance reporting, scanning, uh, and auto automating the patching process to maintain compliance is a huge value proposition for this solution. Um, I'm happy to announce that HP has just uh, released a new version of this product. So. The primary um, benefits uh, of this product were really focused at some fairly large uh, customers in the past where um, you know, people that had tens of thousands of servers on a large global basis uh, could obviously uh, um, take advantage of this solution. Um, HP has just released a new version called um, the, the Standard Edition of Server Automation. It's basically a virtual appliance. Uh, it's targeted at people who have less than 3,000 servers, um, Windows and Linux kind of platforms primarily. Um, but it, being a virtual appliance, it can be installed in less than an hour uh, and um, turned on and, and have your, your uh, environment discovered uh, very quickly and put your environment, your server platforms under management very, very quickly. So for you uh, that are out there that are in, the small to, you know, in a smaller to medium business that may have looked at technology like this in the past and determined that it was too, too complex or too expensive or, or whatever, that has changed significantly. We now, we now are seeing um, small to medium businesses that uh, have the opportunity to implement technology like this in a very, very low cost, easy way to implement. Um, so some of the benefits for this solution is in the compliance and audit area, and, uh, instead of taking you know, 30 weeks for some of our customers to run compliance and audit um, with server automation in place, this takes less than a couple of days. Provisioning new servers um, from um, basically um, uh, a, a virtual or physical um, a ground up basis to provisioning hundreds of servers, significant time savings there, bare metal provisioning, virtual server provisioning, significant time savings there, um, and the ability to uh, leverage the uh, compliance capabilities for various um, types of uh, um, compliance issues like PCI or HIPAA or SOCs. 
uh, come standard out of the out of the box with this this solution. Moving on to database and middleware automation, we talked in our first couple of examples about um, some of the things that this product can do. Basically, this provides a significant hard dollar uh, return on investment for database operations. It does this by automating uh, 50 to 60 percent of what uh, DBA organizations do on a regular basis and making those processes 60, 70, 80 percent more efficient. The platforms supported by this solution uh, include all of the major vendors, uh, Oracle, SQL Server, Sybase, DB2, and on the middleware side, WebSphere, WebLogic, and JBoss. And the key functional area, uh, key use cases are provisioning, configuration, cloning, data migration, patching, uh, doing uh, database upgrades from one version to the other, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And so, as we mentioned in our earlier use cases, uh, customers implementing this solution are, are seeing significant uh, benefits and return on their investment in this um, automation solution. Uh, as well, whether they are small or medium um, sized organizations. Um, the continuous delivery automation, or uh, also known as CDA, this solution is really addressing the issue of breaking down the walls, the barriers between the development or organizations and IT oper operations. Development organizations are driving to be more agile, faster delivery, that their pressures are to be able to deliver applications and application updates faster. Um, and, and, and as you can see on the, the chart on the lower left here, most organizations, if there's a code change, good 80% plus takes a week, two weeks, or months to, the, to get those changes out into a production environment. So uh, the attitude or the working relationship between traditional development teams and IT operations uh, is not good. As you can see in the chart on the upper right, 40% or 7% uh, of the respondents um, say that this is an uncollaborative kind of environment. Uh, so the continuous delivery automation solution is there to break down that silo and put a solution in place that will um, automate the continuous delivery of business application, hence the name of the product, um, from um, different stages of the development QA uh, staging and production uh, environments. So the solution um, is unique. There's some, uh, it, it provides a model-driven approach for defining a model of your, of your application across multiple deployment uh, technologies, um, and then automates the release cycle, uh, including the infrastructure, application deployment, integrating of monitoring traditional IT management service into a uh, traditional IT environment, public cloud, private cloud, across different kinds of environments, whether the servers are physical or virtual or whatever, and then providing the ability for feedback from the uh, uh, deployed environment back into the dev and test environment um, so that uh, those um, performance issues or uh, um, error issues can be fed back into the dev and test environment, and the automation cycle continue, continues uh, to improve. So early customers of this solution have seen success rates of application deployment as high as 95 percent, uh, failure rates on application deployments reducing, uh, reduced con uh, uh, significantly. Um, and um, uh, in increasing just the general knowledge and, and quality of products across the board. So, um, in, in, in automating your cloud, HP's um, belief in, in cloud um, automation is the, the number one goal is full application automation delivery. Uh, automating um, uh, or delivering a cloud that is that is really just the infrastructure up to the server layer uh, really provides uh, uh, only a, only partial advantage to an organization. It's really when you focus on delivering the full stack application uh, in your cloud and automating that process is where you really see significant benefits of moving to a cloud environment. 
um, to begin with. So HP is bringing these industry-leading automation solutions for IT management, process automation, and technology automation to the cloud to provide a uh, fully automated cloud environment uh, underneath a, a improved cloud broker uh, to fully automate the process of deploying business applications with full IT uh, governance and lifecycle management that is ITIL compliant and has all the components of a managed environment for monitoring, security, performance, asset management, compliance, etc. And, and HP is delivering that on the industry's most open, flexible cloud, uh, cloud platform um, that, that the industry has to offer at, at, at the moment. So um, the four key pillars of the HP software portfolio that is critical to uh, automating your cloud environment, obviously we've talked about automation, the whole business service management uh, suite of solutions for infrastructure monitoring, application monitoring, and doing predictive analysis of the performance of your cloud, very important, along with the, the industry's best suite of security products for applications, infrastructure across the board, and IT service management, asset management, discovery, CMDB, and service desk. So the, the message here is the same tools used to automate traditional IT operations are also uh, important and critical to deployment of your private cloud environment. So a little focus on a couple of other solutions that we haven't talked about yet in, in terms of a cloud environment. Uh, one is the whole uh, cloud service uh, automation solution and self-service portal. And the other is the matrix operating environment that sits on top of HP's cloud system matrix. Um, cloud system matrix offers uh, the infrastructure, uh, a combined infrastructure in a, in a box. So storage, network, and server components um, already pre-integrated and consolidated and driven by uh, an integrated operating environment on top of um, the platform. So the CSA product brings um, an open, extensible um, solution for managing the full life cycle of your cloud, whether uh, of your hybrid cloud, uh, whether you be uh, interested in deploying uh, your own private cloud, having a, 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 um, um, integration with your, some of your public cloud solutions. It's an open, extensible pl uh, platform for controlling all of your um, services and resource pools regardless of the infrastructure that they're managed in. Um, with the capabilities recently being added for chargeback, showback, full asset management, and integration with the executive scorecard, you can now um, fully track all of your assets and your cloud services um, in your hybrid cloud deployment environment. Um, <clears throat> the um, self-service portal and the ability to have a very easy to, de uh, easy to deploy uh, service design process in the CSA product now um, provides you some of, the, some of the industry's best capabilities in terms of uh, designing your, your cloud services and deploying those for your end users in a very easy to use, powerful cloud service um, portal. The matrix operating environment, again, this is primarily a, a solution to allow you to put together service maps um, across your infrastructure for storage, network, uh, and server technology. It's, um, uh, already pre-integrated with the CSA platform, so designing a service in CSA and connecting that to an infrastructure map within the MOE is out-of-the-box functionality. Um, we also have connectors, MOE also has connectors into 
public cloud scenarios such as uh, Amazon's uh, web services, Savas's cloud environment, and OpenStack APIs to almost any other provider. So supporting the OpenStack uh, technology is, is, is uh, already pre-built into the matrix operating environment. So the automation solutions bring you sort of the best of both worlds in terms of scale and time to money. These are proven solutions. They've been proven over many, many years. Many, many customers, both large, medium, and small. They're open, supporting multiple operating systems, databases, middleware, um, virtual environments, um, and, and basically are virtual environments and OS platform agnostic solutions. So whether you are looking to improve your, your traditional data center operations or move towards your cloud, uh, move towards a cl cloud kind of environment, these solutions can bring significant business value to your organization. So how do you get started? Well, that depends on where you are at in your, uh, in your environment. It also depends on the size of IT operation that you have. In some of the traditional data center operations, some of the, the, the easier sort of no-brainer, low-hanging fruit types of, types of uh, things that we look at and can see people um, focusing on is just taking IT processes that you already have that you're using today and automating those. Well, so whether you're spending, looking at where you spend a lot of time, is it is it incident processing? Do you have you, do you have thousands of incidents and that eat up a lot of personnel time in your organization? Uh, delay responses, delay uh, the time to repair of incidents. This is an easy area to pick up just what you're doing today and automating it, um, and and see an immediate impact to your business. Uh, obviously, if you have nothing, if you're not dealing with a single uh, platform for coordinating your servers and and um, manage the, the patching and compliance process around your servers. This is a vulnerability not uh, in addition to a cost scenario. So now implementing SA for compliance management and patching is, is another important area to consider very early in, in your process. Um, and now if you are a small to medium customer, um, this is not something that is outside of your reach in terms of cost or complexity. Uh, database uh, automating database administration is a new area of automation for most organizations. Uh, it's, it's, it's really uh, a, a, an area ripe for uh, good um, efficiency operations um, and another area to think of as a, a new greenfield place to, to think of automation. Um, and then just expanding your use of OO um, across the organization is an area where we see continual process improvement and cost benefit. Some other uh, use cases um, that are emerging that we see common across our customers are implementing things like self-service business models, whether it be for infrastructure, database, or full business applications, um, imp implementing self-service so that con your customers see uh, improved uh, service from your organization. Um, and the ability to sort of self-serve uh, uh, their needs. And then as people are moving into cloud uh, kinds of environments, uh, really stepping up and looking at platform uh, and application automation beyond just the infrastructure and making that a self-service kind of environment. These are two uh, new use cases that are becoming fairly common in the industry. Uh, so last, before we get to any questions, um, obviously uh, HP and Results Positive as a team are here to help. Um, we have a number of service offerings that can come in and kind of look at where you're currently at. You know, whether your CIO has a stated agenda in terms of data center cost reductions or uh, moving to a cloud, um, we can uh, help you build a, a, a series of plans for meeting some of those objectives that we have offerings of things like value discovery workshops where we will come on site, look at your operation, uh, and, and look at key areas where automation can um, uh, 
drive efficiency gains and cost reductions for your organization based on where you're at.